Hello and welcome to another episode of the LNUR line. We're covering some uh, final Brick Train Awards winners for 2020 now uh, for the LNUR award. So we had two very simple criteria for that um, because we are pretty simple minded in the LNUR. Uh, one criteria is um, we only looked at UK entries and the second criteria is they couldn't be an LNUR member. Um, and we have uh, two prizes to give away thanks to our sponsors TechBrick, who are UK distributors of TrickBricks and uh, SBrick and all the sort of stuff that um, Lego train fans like using, um, particularly for these plays. So before we crack on, we're going to introduce uh, some of our uh, members and a guest. Uh, so I'm Richard, aka Bricks McGee. Uh, we have Matt Dawson, who's our usual and hard worked podcast producer. Uh, we have Nicola, another LNUR member. Uh, uh, Chris Miller is still with us. Button Tog. Uh, and then we have Sam, aka British Bricks, um, who was winner of the Brick Train Awards 2020 uh, Best Theme Locomotive uh, and is here to have a bit of a chat with us as well about these winners. So uh, we do have a short list um, of all of the British entries for the Brick Train Awards. So Matt's going to pull that up for us now so we can have a look. So our first entry is um, the ROMC signal box and uh, Lego Thumper model by Stuart Jones, um, and yeah, we we love this. This is a this is a very small shot of quite a, a much larger layout, which is uh, has fully working signals and um, level crossings and all sorts of awesome stuff like that. Um, it's truly brilliant, and um, hopefully I will get to see it in a in the brick um, at some point once this, this lockdown is finished. Uh, moving on, we have uh, the engine shed by, um, I think it's the Instagram user known as Northwest Bricks, um, but we'll firm that up in the description. Um, this engine shed is again, part of another massive layout um, and he, he entered for uh, best structure and it it's just really superb, lovely colors, some lovely details like the, um, guttering in the drain pipes um, and some of the decorative details as well. I just think it's um, it's a really nice model. Uh, and moving on once again, we have the Welsh Pony Narrow Gauge Locomotive uh, by Morgan Whittle in Wales, uh, who entered in the T-Fold category, the teenage fan of Lego. Um, and we, we really love this model. Um, it's, it's just superb. Um, and next, we have, oh yes, so this is the BR Class 57. Um, so this model, um, we did look at it because it was a British prototype, um, but it's by a German builder called Martin Lautz. Um, and uh, it was really popular with members. Um, I think it came third in the overall voting, uh, voting between members. Uh, so second prize for the LNUR award in the Brick Train Awards 2020 goes to uh, Andy Mitchell, who built this uh, DB800 class warship uh, locomotive. We really love this. Um, there's quite a lot of customization there, and it, it's such a hard prototype to capture in Lego. Um, this is instantly recognizable uh, and was was really popular with uh, with all of the LNUR members. And the winner for the LNUR, LNUR Award 2020 is this uh, BR Class 08, or Gronk, by Paul Robinson, um, which we have discussed uh, at length. And um, anybody who follows the usual podcast will know that we're massive fans of uh, 08s, or Gronks as they're known. Um, and this was, it was almost an obvious winner, but um, we did actually have a proper conversation about it. So congratulations both to Paul and Andy, and we'll be in touch by email to, um, Get you some uh, get you some vouchers to spend on TechBrick. Um, so, if anybody, any uh, anyone on the podcast has uh, any of the models they want to go back and see and discuss, um, we can open it up to that now. Uh, to make it easy, shall I just go back through the order we just looked at them? We could, but we don't want to make Matt's job too easy. Mm, yeah, so let's Matt go to let's the go stuff. to the third one we looked at. <laughs> <laughs> Matt can figure out which one the third one is. Let's go back to this. <laughs> That's because I actually numbered all the pictures. Oh. Let's ask him in Malaysian. 
<laughs> so this is the third entry. Ah, this is the uh, 57. Yes. I got it right! Yay! It's, um, it is really nice. Um, it The the bogey is particularly well done. I think the shaping is nice. The colour scheme is nice. Um, yep. It, it I have just neat. noticed something, actually. Yeah. Uh I think having the real thing to my left hand side, I've, I've just realised it's actually the display base from the new crocodile locomotive. It is. They've used yeah. in the render. <laughs> actually, quite a few of the later entries in the um, Brick Train Awards this year, uh, quite a few entries did use the base for the crocodile train for other models as a photo, sort of a photo background. I noticed a lot of people made the mistake of not turning it round so it had the. Uh four studded bit for the sign for the crocodile that they just lazily pulled off shoddy yeah Cause it was, you know that that made them uh, lose that's it went you know up oh, studs on show out you go <laughs> yeah, it looks really great I wonder, is that uh one by two technique uh or, is it a brick or um Wait, or near the exhaust yeah, yeah, isn't it? That's yeah, line. that's uh, that's a too long technic beam. Uh, yeah. it's the oh. it's the um, it's not the what we call the connector peg and axle. It's just the two connector peg version. Mm. I was just I was wondering if that's how you turn it on because, or oh, maybe you press that in. And it is right next to the um, IR receiver. I'd probably say yeah. no because it's too close to the IR receiver. Unless, of course, the IR receiver is actually the other way around. Yeah, possibly. But, uh, mm. Could be completely wrong altogether. It could be one of the headlights turns it on. <laughs> the only other thing it might be, if you look, if uh, we're talking about batteries, is actually just. And I'm not sure how if if it, my mouse is actually going to cover it, but uh, this area here looks oddly suspicious as a battery on and off point. Oh, just in front of one of right these, next to the piece. right next to the. Um, yeah. These uh, vents here, and it's just the right sort of depth to be a almost mm -hmm. like a, um, an extended plate where it's got the toggle mechanism, like you have for. So I'm not sure which set it will be, but at least the yellow cargo one. I'm not sure which one it is, but I know at least one of the Lego um, recent ones has had a mechanism where they've just used an extended plate and the flex along with the boats to turn to the battery box on and off. So it might yeah. be a similar things to that okay nice um, really the nice. only other one i'd really if i can actually get the thing to actually point is actually uh this one for welsh pony um yeah. now i think this is actually quite a really good model for the scale um mm. because obviously mm. narrow gauge is one thing but to use narrow gauge in lego scale is quite is another and it's a really well detailed model for the size um the valve gear yes is not accurate um but at this size accurate valve gear would be near impossible unless you were doing something such as uh like a shea or a heisler or something um because mm. again a, just because everything's so much bigger you'd have um, a bad time scale british off. british narrow gauge is rather tight and narrow for obvious reasons because it uh, has to go through yeah. small tunnels and cuttings and things like that and obviously this has been really well executed i especially like the way they've done the saddle tank mm. so it's, it's a yes it's a bit of a what i'd call the standard fix so obviously what they've done is they've used a standard four wide top and then you use not snide uh snotted sides which is a bit of a standard technique now but it does work to the uh, locomotive's favor I was thinking mm. in this case. I like the way too how it's not really like, you know, like compared to the Emerald Knight where it's just slope to slope, they've actually put a plate up to the handrail and that handrail sort of smooths out that like ungainly sight when you get the two edges yeah. off the slopes together. So I think that's really nice that he's done that. Mm. The only the only point I'd say doesn't work in this loco's favour is the chimney. Um, because I've actually used a light bluish grey piece of bar. I was just about to point that out as well. Which uh, I think, I think the is the. Piece. I think out of everything, that's the only detractor I really would point out. Um, 
Um, I mean, the only other thing really I could possibly say is the what they've used a dark bluish grey um, set of binoculars for the valve gear. You can get them in light bluish grey, but obviously that's again at a cost. And as this is a T4 model, you know, it's we're getting into the realms of being nitpicky for final details when in reality it's quite a good model overall. Yeah, it's a it's a really solid model overall, and you know, especially when viewed that it is a T fold who's who's built this. Mm. Just um, what what pieces are used next to the the brown bit that's like the nameplate to the left? Oh, you mean that'll be a Technic one long beam, as they call it? Oh, okay. So what they've done is that's actually rest so it's where the bottom of the brown tile is there's actually what looks to be like a one by one plate or one by two depending on uh what they've done and then you've got a one by one round stud then the technic uh uh sort of beam thing and then they've used actually i think it might be a too long one possibly um yeah. and then they've used another one by one round plate on top so there'll obviously be a little uh technic peg in there um to actually keep the top stud on I do like that. It's uh, not something I've seen. I think it's used... Uh, I, I mean, I've used a similar sort of thing for my Camelback, um, and it's in use quite a lot on American models for brake rigging and cylinders and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. um, cause the Technic, the Technic uh, section for like one, one long beams and the two long sort of... I would, I'd say connector... Um, are quite useful to represent small cylinders and actuators and that sort of thing because they're quite useful because you can put the Technic stud pins in so you get a stud connection at the end and they actually accept a stud themselves so you can actually mount it on top of a stud or use Technic pins to actually change it into a stud um, so there's quite a few tips and tricks you can get around while using those mm -hmm. Fantastic Awesome uh, next model, where do we want to go next? The first one. The OAs. Mm. <laughs> Play system. Why does that not surprise me? Yay! Great Guess which one I voted for. <laughs> <laughs> well, it received... Um, yep, it received a lot of them. Here's um, one I built earlier. Up to that uh, standard. <laughs> I will point out, um, I mean, I've obviously done it before, but uh, as an 08, um, quite a lot of people follow, I think it's Masayo Hidoka's yes. instructions on YouTube, um, which actually produces an inside framed 08, which didn't actually exist. Um, because primarily for the reason that the motors on the uh, axles are actually too big to have inside framing. Um, so mm. they actually used outside framing and then the rods actually extended beyond that so that obviously adds a great deal to width of models and in this uh, circumstance this is actually a 8 wide model um, if you're measuring just the body width I think in terms of actual overall width it's probably more closer to 9, possibly 9.5 um, so it is quite a wide model but because it has, because the builder has gone to that extra width, um, they've been able to cram in a lot more detail um, than other builders. Mm. Mm. Yeah, just like the subtle details, like the droid arms over the connecting rods, and like, like we said before, how he's used a spanner as the coupling hook. I think was really a nice touch there. Yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, droid arms. I think are supposed to be the springs. Yes. Yeah, mm. that's right. Which is quite a prominent feature on the 08s being got obviously outside uh, sprung. The one thing I, I do quite like, and it's really hard to get right on 08s, is the uh, sandboxes uh, just in front and behind the uh, driving wheels. And they're at a really good angle. So I'm not sure how that's been done. I'd probably say it's probably a hinge connection. So it's probably like a one by one uh, plate with a clip and then a corresponding bar piece behind it and in the frame somewhere um, but it does has worked out really good for this model mm. yeah definitely okay. 
no more. Um, okay, we can move back on to. Um, shall we go to the signal box? The signal. Yeah. So this is the signal box. I think there's some. Um, uh, Stuart, the the builder of this, um, has quite a lot of videos on um, certainly on Twitter. Um, I can't remember his username at the moment, but we'll, we'll link that up in the description somewhere. Um, but it's such a it's such a nice layout, and it's I think it's very, it just looks very British from that sort of era, doesn't it? Mm. I've uh, I've got two confessions on why I voted for this one. Uh, the first confession right. is I didn't read it properly and thought it was for the loco. Uh, the second confession is, imagine you've you've gone to work, you're driving your loco, and oh no, I've left my sandwiches at home. On the bottom, there's a service window for like Burger King. They can pull up <laughs> and say, I want a, a McAngus, please. Opens a little slot, and then he's like, yeah, go to bay window two, please. And... <laughs> all, of the, all of those drive-by by rail Burger Kings that exist in the United Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you have to be really quick, and it, it must be chip and pin, because you're never going to throw your coins in correctly as you go past them. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate. Like, I'll have an Angus, please. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a good, good model. <laughs> it is. Good model. Is really yeah. nice. um, I do nice. hope to see it one day running at a show. Yeah. The, um, just the signal box, though, is like, it's, it's really beautiful the way he's, like, done the front facade, like, the way with the tiles, like, I know they're just, you know, using snot on the side, but the way, like, you can see the grooves next yeah. to each other just adds a really nice detail rather than just using you know basic white bricks and just stacking it up you know just that like visual balance there is really nice mm. especially where he's used at the bottom to in contrast uh you know the dark orange with the bits of dark red and brown to like you know add that little weather effect it's really nice i, lo so, I love that one. sometimes less is definitely more and this is definitely one of mm. those cases oh yeah for sure yeah Really I mean, nice. it, you could put a lot of detail in it. It just it'd overwhelm it. That's it. Yeah, it's really nice. Good backdrop. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, what should we move to next? There's the uh, engine shed, and there's the. Have we done the fifty-seven? We can't remember. We, yeah, that was the third yeah, we one did. we went back to. Let, let's talk about the shed. I was about to say, uh, let's conclude with the shed and then we can move to the uh, also runs. Yes. So, mm. Let's say the uh, one thing I would point out here is there's uh, quite a lot of greenery growing around the shed. So obviously it's a bit more of a disused or certainly more, uh, it's been around for a while sort of aesthetic. Yeah, you'd um, have thought to give it a clean down before he took a photo, wouldn't you? <laughs> Um, and the other thing I, I quite like is the little bits of detail. So obviously they've uh, is used the new, reasonably new um, window piece which is supposed to represent the lattice uh, sort of style of window, um, which I think was new in the Harry Potter range. Mm. Um, and obviously there are some windows they've used, especially at the front, but a lot of the others looks look looks like it's just those which had this nice sort of vent sort of look to it um, which again is very in keeping with the real thing and the other in interesting parts use um, if you want to call it that is the uh, one by 2 Technic bricks with the axle hole which they've used represents uh, the uh, decorative uh, brickwork you'd see along the side oh yeah there's mm. also a um, one of the Lego minifigure saucepans as part of the guttering um, just towards the office on the depot on the side. Oh, yeah. It is nice to see uh, guttering on a model. I know I know some people who've made sheds who haven't done any guttering. Mm. Uh, some of them haven't even put any roof on. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I did note, I and mean, it's uh, something that you'd probably easily miss if you were just looking on the outside, is that the inside... Um, and it's roughly in line to where that uh, adjacent 
edition would sort of line up. There's actually a it's actually a bit thicker to represent where a sort of almost like structural support column would be. Um, mm. So although you can't see it from the outside, uh, you, on the inside it is actually shown that the walls actually are slightly bit thicker because obviously that's where part of the roof support is. Right. I'm uh, I'm gonna have to take points off for uh, not having any track. How how are the locos gonna get in? I know someone stood in the way. True, it's very dangerous. Mm. Unless there's a banksman, he could be like, "Back, ah, no, whoa, whoa, no track, stop." <laughs> it's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible point. <laughs> it's a big point. <laughs> nah, it's good. Uh, it's a really lovely model. Mm. Any any more? Do we have any more to go back to? No, I think this is the last one. I think we've done more, haven't we? So we uh, did we did the Welsh pony, we did fifty seven, we've done this, we've done the O eight. The only uh, thing we haven't really covered is the warship, but we did go over it quite well during the first round, so Okay. Okay, well um we'll sum up uh again and um then uh, finish this shorter podcast off so congratulations to our winners um second prize to andy mitchell aka uh hod carrier for his uh, db800 class warship and to uh oh, totally lost his name paul robinson for the br class 08 uh gronk you must have known we'd be judging uh based on gronks so congratulations <laughs> will be a pitch, um but you say it was a fix sorry yeah. guys <laughs> Everybody knows now. Next year, just submit Gronks. Um, that's all we want to see, really. I mean, I've uh, got six <laughs> going on twelve, so you know what I'm going to vote for. You can't enter. I uh, can vote though. You can <laughs> build some Gronks. Uh, just a few more notable entries to cover. Um, the first of which, um, and hopefully we have an image for this, is uh, an engine shed uh, by Pete Warmby. Let's see if we can find a photo of that one. So there we go. Yep, lovely. So um, you can see it's uh, dark red is very popular at the moment in engine sheds, apparently, um, and for good reason. It's a it's a great color. Um, yeah, we really like this one. Um, it is a it's a digital render, but it it does the job really nicely. Um, some some nice details. I would be quite happy owning something like that. I think. Um, our second honourable mention is to a it's actually a German builder um, who built a uh, recreation of the Glen Finnan viaduct um, <laughs> there we go yep so a lovely yeah. curved viaduct uh, a nice little valley scene beneath that as well um, we, we really like that especially the sheep uh, Trace really appreciated the trees of course <laughs> um, apparently loves trees I was going to keep my mouth shut and you said it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, just that the colours and the overall look um, is, yeah, it's really nice. Some nice details on that. Um, and a, a nice technical challenge in the curved viaduct. Uh, this my that, thing I've only just noticed, that those coaches are really close to touching. Yeah. yeah the, the issue is, and this is something I have noticed as well with this photo, is that they've done what would, what the what you'd call the reissued Harry Potter books sort of style of loco. So it's obviously mm. got a lot more bits to it. Um, but then they've used the West Coast Railways uh, Mark 1s. Uh, next up, we have an honourable mention for um, probably one of the most unusual entries, at least that I saw as a judge, um, which was an electric uh, locomotive model, um, which was a fictional solar-powered model by uh, Jean Desiree Katanga, I think his name is, based in London in the UK. Um, I just thought this was so creative and so out there compared to most of the models we got were based on real prototypes. Um, he sent through loads of really great images of the model um, and also a PDF brochure of how um, the, this fictional solar-powered loco would uh, would work. Um, I thought it was just really creative and uh, that's what Lego is really all about, is the creativity, and it, it was so kind of out there. Um, I particularly love the, I think that's a crow at the top on the funnel. That's a crow mm. from the top of 
Mm-hmm. Is it Jack Sparrow's hat? Or oh no, it's um from the Lone uh, Ranger. Lone Ranger, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's from the Lone Ranger sets. Um it was <laughs> pro head. It's just so weird, but in a good way. Um I thought that was that was worth an honorable mention. Uh, and finally, in the honourable mentions, uh, one goes out to uh, Sergio Batista uh, from Portugal, uh, and this is his CP1150 Sentinel locomotive. Uh, this was in the other locomotives category, um, and Sergio submitted a, a fair few models, and they were all so great in in their quality. Um, it's just a shame that he, uh, unfortunately, didn't get any any prizes, but. That, I mean, this model particularly just deserved the shout out because it's so superb um, and well observed. Um, it's so it's really satisfying to look at. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's enormous. Is it? Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? It must be about eighteen wide. wide or, yeah. Ish. So um, yeah, that rounds up our um, our uh, our section here. For- <coughs> our award and a couple of our other favorites from the brick train awards 2020 um thanks for listening we'll just say um thanks to uh matt who has acted as producer again and will be editing out the many mistakes i made during this section um <laughs> thanks also to nicola and chris lnur members and to uh, sam aka british bricks for joining us and what time is it now in australia sam it is 5 49 time for breakfast <laughs> Yeah, Cheers. <laughs> so um, thanks for joining us. Um, just to say uh, we will be emailing um, the first and second prize winners. So if you are, if you do happen to be listening, um, please do um, reply to that and we'll get your prizes sorted with uh, Tech Brick as soon as we can. So thanks again for listening to uh, the LNUR line. We will be back with some more episodes um, soon, but in the meantime, you can check them out on the website lnurrailway.co.uk forward slash podcast um, and you can find us on twitter and facebook and instagram as lnur railway well lnu railway that really doesn't scan does it no. so thanks for listening and we'll see you next time yeah, bye Cheers. bye yeah.